All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay. So today we're going to be discussing the Pixel 6a after almost two weeks of use. Uh, and I want to start in an area. Uh, I'm going to answer some of your questions, but I also want to key in on some areas, so go a little deeper onto, and onto why I made certain choices with this device. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the network. Now, I, you guys know, if you don't know, I've been with T-Mobile probably, I, I've been with them for, I know it's been about 26 years or so, but I've been with them before they were T-Mobile. And I'm talking about network because I've had the worst experience with T-Mobile as far as making phone calls go over the last year. It's gotten worse. They keep getting all these awards and you know, I, I'm just thinking, I don't care about your data speeds. Uh, John Ledger left and then the network went down. I, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. But <laughs> all jokes aside, um, I tried this device on T-Mobile and um, thinking it would be better because you know, obviously, I, again, I've been with them for so long. Um, I, I just opted to switch my lines over to Cricket. Uh, and the reason I chose Cricket is because I wanted to save money. I, I need to be able to make phone calls. Cricket's data speeds, if you saw me post on Instagram, you probably saw me post recently uh, on Instagram, you know, uh, you know, you know, Cricket for the win. I was testing uh, Cricket's network and it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it, it, getting just about the same speeds as T-Mobile uh, and I think that's important so I opted to switch my lines over to Cricket and um, I was I was only pay I was paying obviously a little bit less for four lines at T-Mobile because of my military status but with Cricket you know ultimately it came to about the same thing like a hundred dollars or a little bit less but T-Mobile had all the perks of like um, all the freebies that they give away and stuff like that which, when you have a line. So my military account, I decided to let it go because I need to be able to make phone calls before I have all these fancy download speeds. And this is where Cricket came in and I was extremely impressed. Um, I, I didn't, again, I didn't want to start a, a service with at and I didn't want to be on like a contract with someone basically. Uh, and I, you know, I pay full cost for phones anyway most of the time. So I still will have a T-Mobile line. It just won't be my primary line. Because T-Mobile service is actually really good. It's just that when I need them, they're never there for phone calls. I have more complaints about phone calls than anything else when using my T-Mobile line. With Cricket though, um, no problems. Never had a drop call. We have service everywhere. And I take a two hour trip sometimes, sometimes a three hour trip in a, in, in a week. Uh, and T-Mobile cuts out in the same area every time for like 45 minutes of the trip or 30 or 35 minutes of the trip or so, 30. And um, it, it shouldn't be like that. So it, it's a really open area. There's more than enough. Everybody else service works except for T-Mobile. Uh, so the, the wise choice for me was to save money and go to Cricket Wireless. Was well, going to do Mint and stuff like that. But I was like, yeah, I, I want to pay the way I want to pay. So um, I tried Visible. Visible was good. But even Visible service doesn't, it couldn't compare when it comes to just really solid phone calls. People still had complaints about uh, visible wireless too. So that's, that's the network talk. I gave you a very detailed discussion about the network. This phone is now being used basically on AT&T. As you can see there, my signal is ridiculous. It's really good. So if you're planning on using the Pixel 6a, you're going to get a different experience depending on where you are. But for me, I, I chose to switch everything over to AT&T's network basically. Now I still have Google Fi. Obviously, you guys, I know I have Google Fi. This is basically T-Mobile and, and, you know, mixed with other carriers to give the strongest signal. Uh, but the network for me has been phenomenal over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and I'm just really happy to be able to, to actually get the benefits of, and I think this is definitely what's happened my, helping my battery, uh, which is where I'll go next. The battery life on this thing is absolutely great, man. I mean, it, it definitely can last. I mean, sometimes it used to tell me up here, like, what the battery thing was. It does it on my... See how it does it on my um, my Pixel 5a 5G. It lets me know how much. I think that might be something I have to turn on. I'm not sure, uh, but I like that it tells me you know how much uh, battery is left when I swipe down like that. Uh, and as you can see, the Pixel 5a is ridiculous on the battery, obviously. Um, but this device, I'm able to grab a roughly, you know, a day, a day and a half of real solid use before I decide, okay, I'm going to put it on the charger. And normally when I charge, I'm between 20 and 35% or so. I don't let it run down too far. I, it, obviously, it has gotten really low before, but, you know, that's just because I forgot to put it on the charger or something like that. But 
Uh, the standby time on here is really good. I don't think you'll have a problem with, with the standby time on here. Google has done something um, with this device to, I, I say that they're shaking up the industry a little bit because really you, you always get that device that it's like, dang man, this device is so good. You know, how? To, where do I place it? Is it a mid-range? So people are still on this conversation. Oh, it's a mid-range, it's not a flagship, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, they're shaking up the industry by, once again, by bringing out a device for 450 um, with the powerhouse that's inside. Now, I was watching East Computer Solutions uh, video last night's live stream uh, before I turned it in, and I caught Barry Johnson talking about, you know, and, and this is the I've heard Barry talking about this a couple of times about the the performance of the Tensor chip this time around, and and with coupled with this price, it's just kind of unbeatable. I mean, you can match it up against other phones if you want to, uh, but uh, I I I truly believe that when it comes down to it, what's inside is really what's driving this device. Uh, coupled with a smaller form factor, Google is on to something, and I think. If other OEMs can stay in this lane right here, like I'm really excited, folks. Are you guys going to ask me about the Zen Phone 9? Well, yes, of course I'm excited about the Zen Phone 9 because not only do I like very powerful big phones, I love small, compact, powerful phones because they're easier on your pocket. And so then if I'm in a situation where I say I'm going to throw on a case, shout out to Tudia, this is still a small, compact phone, son. This is, this is great. This is what a lot of people would probably prefer to carry around. So let's just say I go for a run or something like that, and you have the pouch. You know the when you put the pouch on your the thing on your arm for your music or whatever, you put your phone in it. Putting this big old phone in there, you know, and I'm not taking shots at this particular phone. I'm just saying, putting a larger phone in one of those is kind of crazy sometimes. So you can have your small compact powerhouse phone and you keep it pushing, even with the case on. You know what I'm saying? So. Google is is has always been on one, and I can't stress enough how how happy I am that they took this route. Like this is a real upgrade. You know what I mean? Like this is a solid upgrade. The five A to the six A is a tremendous jump, just based on what's inside and what it looks like on the outside. So. You see these two phones and you tell a person who has this phone after two years or a year, however long they had this phone, they say, hey, here's the new phone. You know, what do you think about this upgrade? They're going to they're gonna probably be in awe just because of the way it looks. You know what I mean? So the looks alone give this phone the edge over a lot of different devices out there um, that consider themselves small powerhouse devices. It's going to be a little tough to match uh, this design because this is a really nice design people have already said they love this design and then Google did a better job this time by shrinking down that camera bar they did a favor to all of us by shrinking down that camera bar I think it looks great uh, I have no quarrels with this with this hardware it's beautiful I love the matte size just everything about it and you heard me reference what's inside you heard me reference Barry Johnson talking about benchmarks and things like that um, it, it's gonna take more than just that to change the narrative uh, once you get a few seeds out there that something is flawed. Um, and I, I just feel like uh, there's the 5G Plus, as you can see from Cricket. That means I'm kicking down some serious good network, network speeds. But um, I just think that it, it, it could take some time for Google to see the narrative shift to people really understand what this device is about. Um, so. Let's answer some of your questions before I move on to the next thing here. The wall, oh, the wallpaper. A lot of you guys have been asking for this wallpaper. Well, folks, I hate to disappoint you, but this is not a Google wallpaper. I said in my initial video, this is a Samsung wallpaper. I did a restore from, I, there were some things on this phone I didn't want on this phone right here. So I, re, I restored from this device because it was right next to me and I, I know what's on here. So I chose to bring everything over. And this is a default Samsung wallpaper, folks. This is not a Google wallpaper. You cannot get it from Google. Here it is right here in the center here. This is the blue one. This is like a yellow looking one. Here's a green one. Here's an orange looking one. Here's a purple one. These are default Samsung wallpapers, folks. And you cannot get them on Google unless you Google it uh, and save it to your device that way. 
That has got to be the top question that I've gotten about this Pixel 6a and so many other videos that I've done for it over the last couple of weeks or so. That is almost like the number one question that keeps popping up that I, I just happen to notice it. Whoa, where'd you get that wallpaper from? And I'm like, man, this is what y'all noticing after all this. But I guess, you know, this is what you look at. So, you know what I mean? I understand this is what you're going to see. Um, you know, when you, when you, when you, when I got this, when I'm showing these videos and it's popped up like this, uh, but I, I just feel like the, the wallpapers that Google offer, they're cool and everything, but most of it, as you can see on my pixel 5a, I was at the beach again and in Florida and I took a photo. I was standing right there at the water. The show, I was like, let me take this photo. It's a beautiful picture. I'm going to use it as a wallpaper. So I typically change the wallpapers in a lot of situations to just get something that I want. Uh, and, um, you know, that's just the way I think most people do that. You have pictures of your family, you have pictures of your children, whatever you want to put up there. I think that's what people do. But that is where the wallpaper comes from, folks. It is not a Google wallpaper. So I've talked about the network. The battery life is great. You know, the performance, ultimately, I've talked about that. The, the multitasking thing with this phone, you're going to get some stellar, some stellar battery because of the, I'm getting stellar battery because of the signal. And in turn, you know, the processing power, it doesn't work too hard to keep my device stable. You know what I mean? So if if you have a solid, and I don't know, I wonder if they did something to the Tensor chip this time around, because even though they'll tell you, hey, you know, I've seen a lot of people posting, it's the same chip as last year, uh, and this, this, and this. But the fact of the matter is, it, for me at this point, I'm not having any issues with this with this processor and this this complete setup right here. A couple things I want to point out: uh, coming in at 450, I still see people complaining about no SD card slot, and you know I get it. Uh, you know it, it, it was a time when SD card slots were just a thing. You know, but um, I think 128 gigs. Because remember we were complaining about 64 gigs not being the standard and before that remember it was like 32 gigs and before that remember it was 16 and before that it was eight so and then before that remember you relied on sd cards so we've watched the industry push forward in an area that i think will never satisfy everyone you cannot satisfy everyone and that's just where i'm at with it i personally feel like i could use this device with 128 gigs easy i do it all the time so Base. I mean, even though I have phones that are 512 gigs, and you know the one I'm recording with, I think it's 512. It's just those are devices that I'm. I just got a good deal on it. I just wanted it because I feel like I'm gonna keep it forever. So, you know, what I'm saying I just got a bigger storage. But if this is what they're offering, I don't see that as a bad deal. I know it doesn't have an SD card slot, but I still don't see it as something bad. You know what I mean? So, I don't think it's a bad deal that this does not have an SD card slot considering the trade-off is that they're actually giving you 106 128 gigs of storage and just over a hundred of it is free let's see how much i actually have right now look how this thing flies with the os let's look at my storage um and see i got 80 84 uh gigs available 84 gigs available and you can see 19 for my apps the system is only taking up 13 so that's a huge plus and then you got these videos on that i recorded because i did a lot of 4k videos and then i have 1.5 gigs in the trash so you know you can clean up your device i can delete these videos that if, if i just delete the videos and uh the trash that's over 10 gigs right there i get back but you cannot do anything about your apps because you need to put apps on here that you actually use so even 84 gigs basically i, 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 I could be just under 90 gigs technically uh if i just remove the old videos on here and clean up take out the trash I'll be right back at 100 but i mean some people i think stay focused on numbers for so long and what you think is flawed about a device you never really get past it and unfortunately you get stuck there so um the fact that this has 128 gigs of storage i'm totally fine with it but you may not be and i understand some people like to store everything on their device i personally do not because if i lose my device uh and you know someone happens to be able to get in they might see something that i don't want them to see uh, so, you know, it, it's nothing in a derogatory way. Just, it might be something personal only. I just don't want nobody to see my new grandbaby or I don't want anybody to see my, my sister's child or whatever, you know, it could be anything. Uh, so for me, 128 gigs of storage and then taking advantage of cloud storage to me is, is another way of another ph phenomenal way you should be thinking of this. So 
And plus you also have external storage USB you can plug right in and you can expand it that way. If you have a tech bag, you have a type C or a, several of them and you have several um, things for storage in there. That's just the way it is if you have a tech bag. So for those that don't have a tech bag, I respect you by saying if you don't think 128 is enough, I personally think like think that it is. So um, aside from that though, this phone performs very well. Now another question that I keep getting, I don't know why you guys ask these questions. I will address them. I would have talked about it already if it was an issue. Just think of it that way when you're asking me a question. Because see what happens is, a lot of you guys go watch somebody else's video, then you flood my video and ask me the same question. Whether you watch my entire video or not, I don't know. But you, you're asking questions that you should know the answer to because I'm gonna address any issue, any problem, any flaw, anything I don't like. All these things are gonna be addressed. I don't have an issue with this overheating thing. I actually shot the 20, 30, 40 minute video with this device. Uh, 4K, no overheating, and I chopped it down to 20 minutes or so for the video review of the cameras, and I talk about it in that video. I don't have an overheating issue. It's just not an issue. I'm not saying I'm not going to have it. I'm just saying currently right now, I don't have it. And I'm in a place where uh, it's normally like over 100 degrees all the time. So, you know, today, even though it says 93, it's probably going to feel like 100 that's how it is for me. So when it's 105, it feels like 117. It's, it's horrible. So, But the device still didn't overheat. So the question is about overheating. No, there's no overheating. There's nothing. There's no problems. The fingerprint reader. Some people are saying that they are registering. It's unlocking with fingerprints that are not registered. I only have the two thumbs registered. So um, remember now, bugs, if bugs are a part of operating systems you know you're going to, you're going to get a situation where you have a device fail if it's man made this is made this is something that's thought up by another a guy or a woman and they put it in a package and so you're going to have those people out there to try to flood it and pick it apart which is a good thing because it makes these companies improve on their work so for those that are having problems with the fingerprint reader hey i, I hope that it, it gets fixed for you pretty fast and i hope that um, you know, you, 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 you're able to get past that. Now about the fingerprint reader, it is a slower access to get in. You have to try, you see how that fingerprint pops open? You know, I think that's what a lot of people probably will want. Uh, but you know, the fact of the matter is I don't unlock my, you can see how I unlock my fingerprint reader. I don't just hold my finger there for a second and then it releases and I'll let go. Some people are really caught up on having the fingerprint snap open as soon as they touch, like touch it like that. I don't I don't know people who actually unlock like that like in my real life like I'm seeing people unlock their phones I don't see people doing that I don't see them snapping their finger down real quick and then letting it go and saying oh my god it won't open I just don't see that they just try it and hold it down and then it unlocks so but with Google um, it actually would have been nice for them to put the fingerprint reader on the side like like the this device right here is the TCL remember this yeah stylus love it and a lot of phones are going to fingerprint readers in the power button. I think that would be something that with this design right here, Google, you should probably consider this. I think you would save yourself a lot of headache, especially with the size of this device. It's a perfect thing. It's perfect. So, you know, you'd make the power button just a little bit bigger and move this volume rocker on this side. I'd be totally happy. Uh, because I personally like the fingerprint reader on the back here, but I know you don't want to mess up this beautiful design. Uh, so, you know, it, it is what it is, but I, I just think the fingerprint reader issue, um, is something that needed to be addressed and those people, you know, um, they're having problems, respect. I hope that those problems go away. Personally, I'm not having any problems. So a couple of weeks in with this thing, I've learned that I really enjoy the speakers on here a lot. Um, it, it's, let me see if I can load up something here. Let's see here. I really enjoy the speakers on here. Um, I, I just think it's, these are some of the best speakers ever uh, I've experienced on, on a device and, and I just, I like it a lot, man. So uh, let's go here. Back to another video, it's probably been a minute, but I wanted to go ahead and give you an update on the vehicle. So the truck is doing great. I'm at uh, about 2,000 miles right now. So up to this point, you've seen everything that I've done to the truck as far as the interior um, and things like that. But this is kind of just an update on 
my experience with owning a diesel vehicle. You see it snapped to 4K, it's cleared up. It's beautiful. some things that I've noticed that are a little bit different than owning a regular gas vehicle, but 2,000 miles in, no yeah, see, and also what you look at here is you look at how beautiful the, the quality of the screen is. There's always going to be uh, a situation where you find somebody doesn't like something and you, you just go with it, man. It doesn't really bother me too much when a person says they don't like uh, a screen. I've seen some people telling me, Jay, you know, the, the screen is inferior to the iPhone 13 screen. I'm thinking that's, you know, I guess whatever. I mean, if that... <laughs> that if you feel like that, I think this screen is freaking beautiful, uh, and you know it's it's a beautiful thing. I don't see the quarrels that people try to build and you know start like these in, invisible beefs. I think it's pretty silly. But I guess if you're passionate about it, you're just passionate about it. That's what it is. So you know, for me, I see a beautiful display here, and you saw me crank it up to full brightness. You saw me crank it to um, uh, 4K 60. Uh, this is what they're offering. This is a beautiful screen right here. So how a person could say it's inferior to another screen. And mind you, I have the iPhone 13 and I have the iPhone 13 Pro. I would say it's probably inferior to this display. I mean, because <laughs> when, when you think about it, you know, um, every everybody, it's, it's like these, again, these invisible beefs that people have uh with, with phones they I'm, I'm cranking up the i'm cranking up that same video here and i'm gonna crank the brightness up because you see, look what the brightness is and look where this is so you look at this um phone now and we're gonna crank this brightness up that to me is an inferior display this is inferior to me I mean, and I don't mean it in a bad derogatory way. I just mean that the, obviously this is a quad HD display. You can clearly see it. Well, I can't say you can clearly see it, but to me, looking at this right here in front of me, I can see a huge difference in the quality. It's a lot brighter. It's more vivid. You know, it's just what it is. So, I, you know, I, I, I don't think the, the display on the um, uh, Pixel 6a is inferior to the iPhone uh, 13, I think those people just might prefer the display on it, and so they don't really know how to express it, but I, I think this display is phenomenal compared to the to the iPhone 13's display, but that's just me. I mean, it's, it's not taking size or whatever, but that's a, that's a long, drawn-out conversation. I think it'll go back and forth with people who are, a lot of times people are just pro-Apple. Let's just say it like that. Apple can do no wrong. So with me, I think Google is pretty much setting a standard. And see, the sad part is Google's going to bring out the 7 and 7 Pro, right? And I think Google can really nail the market by bringing out phones like this with the Tensor chip and giving it a quad HD display. Give these people what they think they want. Okay, so for me, to, to make this price go up on this phone... They could bump the storage. This would be such a killer setup for me. And then I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going to hold you folks because I know it's probably been almost 30 minutes. But um, to me, give this phone a quad HD display. Same phone, like this phone right here. This phone right here. Give it a quad HD display, right? Give it a quad HD display. Um, give it uh, 256 gigs of storage. Right? Keep this body, keep everything the same. Off give me a red color. Give me a like a, a two-tone red. Give me a couple more colors. Give me a, a dark blue and with a powder blue up here, something like that. Or dark blue and powder blue. Uh give me a a, a, a red some kind of red look. Uh give me two fifty six and five twelve option. Um, you know, give me again the quality should display. Give me twelve gigs of RAM. Uh uh, uh, or maybe even eight. It doesn't matter because uh, the device runs so smooth. Uh, give give me. Uh, 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 I don't need an SD card, but give me two fifty six or five twelve, like I just said. Uh, obviously, the stereo speakers are booming. Keep the processor the same. You know what I mean? And then the price could be seven ninety nine and eight ninety nine in this same package right here with a starting memory option, uh, with all the bells and whistles. Basically, a smaller Pixel Six Pro. Um, and, and, and just keep the price within like 750 and 800 would be this price point. I guess I should say, give me 750 and 800. 
I will be totally happy. I will be willing to pay 800 for 512 gig version of a phone this size. You know what I'm saying? Not 1500 like on the Apple side. And it still bugs me out how people just keep making excuses for Apple. And they call me an Apple hater. I'm like, oh my God, man. They don't, they don't really know the channel. They don't know the channel like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm recording this video with an iPhone 13 Pro Max and it looks absolutely phenomenal. I've been recording more videos in HDR too, if you notice. And I've been using these two devices. I've been using this device and the one I'm recording with for that HDR content. So nonetheless, I won't hold you any longer. I've held you captive for 20, 30 minutes probably. So I'll say this before I get out of here. The Pixel 6a has made its mark. And you know, you go look at some of the people who are actually trying to get a message across of what the phone is really like. Like, um, I, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do it, man. I hate, you know, I don't mind promoting, but you know, if you don't know who Tech Valor is, I'm pretty sure people who follow me know who she is. She's put out 30 plus videos in 11 days. I used to, I used to bump like that. I used to hustle, put them down like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't, I can't do it anymore. And so I'm happy that she's putting in that work and she's pushing this device. Not that she's giving it a bunch of positive reviews either. Go check it out for yourself. You know what I mean? So I just feel like um, if you want to know the truth about a device, spread yourself out, find a bunch of different creators at different levels, and you'll get some completely different experiences. And then you'll run into a situation where several other people are saying the same thing, and then you'll get those few sprinkled in there that are kind of riding each other's coattail. You know what I mean? And you'll get that generic feel of a so-called review. All right, I'm done. It's your man Jay. The Pixel 6a, Barge, uh, is absolutely great, man. I, right now, I'm not having any uh, problems. I talked about the update in another video. The update went to June. Some people are still upset about this, but like I said, man, software updates, if they're not fixing anything, what is your quarrel with it? Why do you have to have this device come and, and I mean, now listen, I'm not, don't take it the wrong way. I'm not making an excuse for Google. Yeah, this device should have come out, you know, and it should be on the current software patch if that's something that you're promoting. You know what I mean? But it's not up to me to keep on reminding you. If you if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, it's up to you to push forward. If you want to ride that out and just keep wearing on them about that, I don't I don't care, to be honest. This device could stay on the June because I, I have other devices that are um, not on the latest security patch and they run absolutely great, man. There is no problem with it. So, I mean, hey, I understand you got to get your software updates. But the only thing, I, I, I think the people who might be more intense about that are the people that are having some somewhat of a problem. You know what I'm saying? So maybe those few people staggered out there with that conversation are the ones who's really having a problem. And like I said at the beginning of the video, respect. If you're having problems, I hope they go away. You know what I mean? So it's your man Jay. The 6A uh, is here. It is arriving. And I'm loving this device, man. Case or no case, I'm loving it. I just think it's a good look, man. This this phone has done something good for the industry at this point in time. It shines all over the Galaxy S22. Uh, it shines all over the Galaxy A53 and a number of other devices. It just shines right over them uh, because, you know, you get into the conversation about what's inside. And you got to admit, what's inside of this thing is pushing it down. They are going to town. And I don't think they should let up. I, I want to see from Google, like I just explained my my wants with a powerhouse small device from Google. I want to see that. There's nothing holding them back from doing it either. It's your man, Jay. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to leave a comment down below. How has your uh, time with the Pixel 6a been? Are you having problems? Are you overheating? Is it cutting off? Is your fingerprint bad? Do you hate this? Do you hate that? Do you wish this? Do you wish that? Let's talk about it down below. I'm out.